pretty rough today. <laughs> well, he's still cute, but he is naked. He normally has clothes on, and today he's naked. I love you, Pippi. So he just wanted to make a little debut, give his love. Okay, au revoir, Pippi la joie. <laughs> so I'm glad you're joining me for book club today. Um, I'm excited about this to talk about our book. Where's the book? Here it is, Live Your Dreams. You know, I'm filming from home because I'm leaving today to go to North Carolina to the Outer Banks with my dear friends, Larry and Pam Winters. And I'm so excited about that. And of course, Pam is my guest speaker for the icing conference. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how excited we are about this. Now, most of you know that the icing conference has sold out in Orlando in November. Well, as of this coming Friday, the city and the people who run the convention center, they are gonna meet with the decision makers to see if we can open up a few more seats. Maybe 100 seats, I don't know. 50 seats, I have no idea. But we are praying and believing that they're gonna give us favor and they'll open up a few more seats because I know some of you said you've already booked your airfare. Some of you are, you took um, days off of work to be there, but you didn't get your ticket yet. So we are praying for favor that we will get to open more seats. So we'll let you know as soon as possible. But as of right now, it is sold out. So I wanted to tell you though, yes, I'm gonna go be with Larry and Pam and I love being with them because they stretch me and they cause me to think bigger, which leads me into our first topic today for our book club. In fact, let me mention real quick, the book club, you know, is on my brand new devotional called Live Your Dreams, a 90 day devotional. And what we've done is we put together a special bundle for the book club. So you get my devotional, plus you get these two audios. One of them is called Journaling Your Time with the Holy Spirit. And then this one is How to Have an Intimate Relationship with God. Now I put these in a special bundle on purpose. This wasn't random. This was on purpose because I want you to get into a habit of a morning devotion, spending time with God, even just reading a quick little encouragement and inspirational daily devotion. But also, I want this devotion to be where you journal your time with the Holy Spirit. And I'll talk about that. I'll explain it as we're going through the teachings today. But I want you to get so intimate with the Lord that you recognize His voice, that you start understanding with great clarity where God wants you to go, what God wants you to do, who He wants you to be with. I want you to have such an intimate relationship with God that you know without a doubt you've heard from God. So that's what these two audios are going to help you do. And then the devotional is going to give you a place for you to start journaling those insights. So are you ready? Let's get right into it. And I want to say thank you. I'm so glad y'all are joining me today. I'm glad that y'all are having fun with the book club because I sure am. This has been fun. And I love reading your comments. You know, let me know in the comments right now if you're enjoying the book club and if you want me to continue it in the month of November. Oh, because we've only got one more week of this book club. Now, let me say it's not too late to get this special offer. If you click the link in the description, you can get this bundle. Um, and like I said, you can start anytime you want to. You can just pick a date and start with that date. So it's up to you. But yes, you can still get this special offer instead of $38 for this bundle, it's only $27. So you save $11 when you get the bundle. Does that sound good? Well, to get it, just click the link in the description. If you're watching on Instagram, just click the link in the bio and it'll take you right to the special book club bundle. Okay, so let's get started. Are you ready? Okay, I wanna start with day 15. Start with day 15. Oh boy. Peppy, shh, silence, Peppy la joie. He responds to French. <laughs> okay, day 15, this is called the make it or break it list. Now this is a story I read about and I love this story. It was about a guy who said one day, he just looked around at his closest friends and he realized two things. They equally hated hard work and they had no intention or desire to improve their lives. So he said, he asked this very wealthy man who wasn't any more intelligent than him or any more good looking. <laughs> he just asked this very wealthy man. He said, how did you become so wealthy? how did you become so successful? And the wealthy man said, 
four words, just four words. You know what they were? Keep the right company. Keep the right company. So he said he started going to conferences, like the icing conference. He started going to conventions and different, you know, success conferences, like the next conference that's coming up. And just connecting with people who wanted more out of life, people who were more goal oriented. And he said all of a sudden he decided to make a list. And the list was simple. He said if someone could drag him down, he put their name on the list. And if someone could improve their life, his life, he would put their name on the list. And he said if someone would drag him down, he would spend no more than five minutes with them. If someone could improve his life, he spent as much time as possible with them. He said after following his make it or break it list, within three years, he was a millionaire. Keep the right company. Isn't that amazing? Well, you know, like I said, I'm going today to North Carolina to be with people who are on the improved list. They're people who cause me to stretch and grow and believe bigger and think bigger. Well, you know, if you spend time with someone, and this is from the devotional, someone who has the cold or has a flu symptom, you'll most likely catch it in most cases. If you invest most of your time with people who cause you to compromise, think small, and limit your potential, you will forfeit the dreams that God has put in your heart. You know, I've heard people say, if you want to see where your life is headed, look at the list of names in your cell phone. What does that mean? You become like the people you spend the most time with. So, Here's what God's word says. Proverbs 13, 20, he who walks with wise will become wise, but the compa companion of fools, I said companion, <laughs> the companion of fools will be destroyed. It's pretty cut and dry, isn't it? Well, I want you to use your notes right here. You know, on every devotion, there's a notes page and that's for you to really get clear on what God is speaking to you. And I can't even tell you how important this is that you make for sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people. People who cause you to come up higher. Even people who make you feel a little uncomfortable because they make more money than you. They're smarter than you. They're more fit than you. They're more educated. They know more about the Word of God than you. It's so good to get around those kind of people because they just cause you to think bigger. So a lot of times I have to tell myself, Terry, does this make you uncomfortable? If the answer is yes, then I commit to doing it. So get comfortable being uncomfortable. Put that in the comments right now. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. So I want you to use your notes page right here and make a list like that guy did. If someone can drag you down, put their name on the list. If someone can improve your life, put their name on the list. And don't be so concerned about someone seeing your list because this is your private devotional. This is your private journal just between you and God. And if you're concerned that someone may see the list, then maybe don't write the word drag or improve, just put D and I, <laughs> but you know. So be honest about it. And let me say real quick, if you're going, Terry, that's great, but I can't go hang out at the beach with Larry and Pam Winters or whoever, you know how you start hanging out with successful people? Reading their books and listening to their audios until it just gets down on the inside of you and it causes your faith to grow. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, right? So that's our first lesson for today is get comfortable being uncomfortable and get around the right people, right? Okay, I want to skip to day number 17. Day 17. This one is called the path to promotion. Now, let me tell you real quick, I heard this, or I was actually watching YouTube, and I saw a story from Admiral Bill McRaven. Now, he was a, he was a Navy SEAL. He was actually responsible for the raid and the execution of Osama bin Laden. So this guy's pretty intimidating. And he was speaking at the University of Texas, and he had his uniform on, and he said to these graduates who were getting ready to, you know, conquer the world, and that's what he said to them. He said, do you want to change the world? And all these graduates were like, yeah, yeah. And you know what he said? Start off by making your bed. <laughs> making your bed. Put that in the comments. It's time to make your bed. So anyway, I, the reason he was saying that is because it is a standard of excellence. So that's why I titled this The Path to Promotion. Because, you know, and I tell a story in the beginning about this guy who, who wanted to rent a house. And he said when he pulled up to the house he wanted to rent, the landlord came out. 
And when she came outside, she was inspecting his car. Like she just kept looking at his car. And then she started asking him all these questions, you know, does it drive good? How long have you had it? Are you pleased with it? Would you buy another one like that? She's asking him all these questions about his car. He said, you would think that I drove like a foreign luxury car. He said it was just a Honda Accord. Well, they went inside, toured the house, and when they came out, you know, he asked how much it cost. And anyway, she told him on the spot that she would definitely rent the house to him. And he said, well, have you had any other people look at the house? And she said, yeah, I've had quite a few people come in. But she said, quite frankly, you are the only person I would even consider renting this house to. He said, why me? Why did I make the cut? And she said, well, after looking at your car, she said, from my experience, if someone takes really good care of their car, it's a good sign they're gonna take really good care of my house. So here's my point in this devotional. I'm sure you've probably heard me say this. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. In other words, if your house is a mess, your leadership will probably be a mess. If you can't even get your home in order, how could you get a company in order? And I'm not trying to be hard with this because that's exactly what the Lord had to teach me. In fact, the first directive the Lord ever gave me when I started getting my life together, he didn't tell me one day you're going to write books, one day you're going to have offices, or you're going to travel the world or, you know, support safe houses. No. The first thing the Lord ever told me during my prayer time, I was journaling just like you are. First thing he said, clean your house. Clean my house. <laughs> and you know, I thought, dear God, is that the voice of God or the voice of my mom? Because surely that's not God's big direction for my life. Clean my house. But you know what? God was teaching me the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And if I can't even trust you to get your home in order, how could I one day trust you to get a ministry in order? So I started with my house. In fact, I love what Pastor Stephen Furtick said. He said, what's next in your life is always connected to what's now. What's next is always connected to what's now. In fact, we see, and I, I talked about it right here, how in the book of Daniel, it talks about how Daniel became distinguished above all other high officials because an excellent spirit was in him. An excellent spirit. So Daniel got a promotion to being over the king's money. When he was a former slave, he became a ruler over the king's money because he had an excellent spirit. What does that mean? Your excellence can be your path to promotion. Do you know once I got my house in order, I got my car cleaned up, I got my purse cleaned up, I got my closet cleaned up, I got the refrigerator cleaned up. Do you know nine months later, I was promoted to be the CEO of an international organization overseeing eight offices around the world? Why is that? I mean, surely God doesn't care that much about my sock drawer being organized, right? <laughs> well, the answer is he does. He cares about that. In fact, the scripture I put on your devotion for day 17 was Luke 16, 10. And it says, if you are faithful in the little things, you will be faithful in the large ones. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. So my challenge for you with this devotional is for you to just in the notes section, list one room that you will start with. Start decluttering, start making it more excellent. You know, start cleaning out things. You know, we got holidays coming up, Thanksgiving's coming up. It's time to start decluttering and getting things ready. So which room should you start with? Well, the answer to that question is the one you spend the most time in. Start with the room you spend the most time in and start with the physical clutter. You know, the jackets that are laying across the chair, the shoes in the floor, the glasses or cups, you know, coffee cups that are on the, the coffee table. Um, it's called a coffee table. I just realized that for coffee. <laughs> I've never thought of that before. <laughs> I don't drink coffee, so, but I eat a lot of cake. So, but think about it. The stuff that you can see with your eyes, the, you know, the newspapers that are piled up on the table, um, the dishes that are piled in the sink. Start with the physical clutter because here's what happens. When you start cleaning up the stuff you can see with your eyes, 
It motivates you to finish, to go deeper, to clean out the refrigerator and the pantry and the dresser drawers. But start with one room. So use your notes right here and write down the one room that you're gonna start with and what you're gonna do. And here's my, my little tip for doing this. Set a timer for 20 minutes. That's it. Not one hour, not one full day, just start a timer for 20 minutes and see how much you can accomplish. And trust me, you are gonna be amazed at what you can accomplish with a 20 minute deadline. So, and here's the thing, when the timer goes off, you might say, I'm gonna do another 10 minutes, but you're gonna be shocked at what you will do in 20 minutes. So, you got it? Okay, hey, put in the comments right there. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. I love seeing you comment and I love getting this ingrained in you. Okay, the next lesson I wanna teach real quick is from day 18. Now, this one is titled, You've Come Too Far to Quit Now. You've come too far to quit now. And I wanted to share this one just to encourage you today. Because so many times you see stories from other people and it just looks like, man, Everything they touch just turns to gold, or surely they haven't been through much, or you wouldn't understand my story. Well, I filled this book with stories of inspiration from people who have had tough times that you would have never known about unless you read it, and it just causes you to get that feeling of, come on, you can do this. If they can do it, you can do it. That's what it does to me. So I start this one out with telling you the story about Star Wars. And this is a story you may not have ever heard. It's about George Lucas, you know, who directed and, and produced this film. But when he first had the idea for Star Wars, he was living in a one bedroom apartment and struggling as a filmmaker. His idea for the film was turned down repeatedly. Studio executives were unwilling to take on such a confusing story, they called it. They considered it a children's movie, like something Disney would produce. However, at the time, Disney didn't even want it. George Lucas was so disappointed, but not defeated. Over the years, the story went through countless changes before being picked up for movie productions. Listen to this. Filming began with an unknown cast and an uninspired crew. A series of mishaps occurred during filming, from injuries to equipment breaking, a rainstorm struck while they were filming. But Lucas, he stayed determined and kept going. Well, that's exactly what you have to do even if nobody around you is cheering you on. George Lucas said, you simply have to put one foot in front of the other and keep going. He said, put blinders on and plow right ahead. Well. At times, he said he wondered if he should just quit and get a real job, but he had made it too far to quit now. Now listen to this. Read those words again. I said, you have come too far to quit now. Star Wars may have only released in 32 theaters, but it surprised everyone and broke box office records. This confusing movie, um, that no one believed in became a phenomenon. You know that the original film and its sequels have grossed billions of dollars with a B um, worldwide. And it now has a massive franchise attracting generations of fans. George Lucas said this, if you want to be successful in a particular field, perseverance is one of the key qualities. Well, listen to this. When you're about to give up, I want you to remember this phrase. The size of the challenge is an indication of the size of your calling. The size of your challenge is an indication of the size of your calling. I think that's a good thing to put in the comments, don't you? Get that ingrained in you. The size of your challenge is an indication of the size of your calling. Your battle can be your burial or your greatest breakthrough. It all depends on your attitude. So listen to this scripture from Psalm 27:14. It says, stay with God, take heart, don't quit. I'll say it again, stay with God. I love that. Now, how does this story make you feel? When you think about, you know, what comes to your mind when you think about quitting? Because right here in the notes section, that's what I want you to do is use this devotional to read stories like that during your morning time with the Lord and just think about things that you've either quit or wanted to quit. You know, maybe it's, you started a YouTube channel and you've got three views or 300 views and you just feel like quitting because it's not working. 
Well, you've got to hear from God about that, but write that down. Say, Lord, I just feel like quitting, but I know in my heart you told me to do this. If you feel like God told you to do it, then keep going. This is part of your story. Or maybe it's, you know, believing for a spouse or believing for a baby. And it just looks like all these years are going by and it's not happening. Don't quit. If God put a dream in your heart, he has every intention of bringing it to pass. But you have to stay in faith. And that's why you have to read stories like this to, to just remind yourself and remind the devil that you are not the only person to go through things like this. You have to have a perseverance like you've never had before to be determined to not quit. You know, maybe it's um, an exam that you failed, a nursing exam, a real estate exam, a, you know, a, an x-ray technician or whatever. Maybe you failed it, maybe you failed it several times. Don't quit. If God put that dream in your heart, then don't quit. See, the enemy does not want you to live your dreams. He wants you to feel like, okay, this is stupid. I obviously can't hear from God. Well, that's what this book club is about. You journaling your time with the Lord during your morning devotion. And if God is stirring those dreams on the inside of you, then you have to make a decision that no matter how many times you take that exam, you will not quit until you pass. Got it? Okay, so think about that. You know, it reminds me of a funny story I heard about this manager who was giving his staff a pep talk and he was just encouraging them to not quit. And he said, did Muhammad Ali ever quit? And the crowd shouted, no. And he said, did Nelson Mandela ever quit? And they all said, no. And then he said, did Mother Teresa ever quit? Of course, the crowd shouted for the third time, no. <laughs> and then for the fourth time, he said, did Thorndike McKester ever quit? And it got silent. And people looked around and they said, who's Thorndike McCaster? We've never heard of him. He said, exactly, because he quit. <laughs> so don't be like Thorndike McCaster, whoever he is, bless his heart. Don't quit, okay? So I just want to read um, two more devotions. Are y'all doing okay? I hope you're doing good today, and I hope that you're actually enjoying the Live Your Dreams devotion. Again, it's not too late to get the devotion because you can start this anytime you want. You can start with the day of the, the month. You can start with day one. You can start whenever. And you know, this is a great gift too for young people because it's filled with motivational stories and celebrities and athletes, people that they're going to love and look up to, but it's also full of God's Word. So, um, it's not too late to get the devotional. Again, if you're just starting the book club, you can still get our little book club bundle. You get the Live Your Dreams devotional plus these two audios. Just click the link in the description and you get $11 off. Instead of $38 for the bundle, you get the entire bundle for $27. So let me read two more. Y'all doing okay? Okay, this is gonna be day 19 and it's called Let Your Imagination Run Wild. Now this is a story I love to tell about the Hall of Fame football coach, Lou Holtz. Now. When Lou Holtz was only 28 years old, he said he lost his job, he had no money in the bank, and he had a wife who was eight months pregnant. Well, he was feeling hopeless one night and, you know, not knowing what he's going to do with his life. And his wife, Beth, went out and bought a book about dreaming, bu dreaming big. Dreaming book. <laughs> but it, he read this book, and it said that you should just sit down and let your imagination run wild. And it said to make a list of everything, everything you can think of. Well, he said that night he sat at the kitchen table and he let his imagination run wild. And he wrote 107 things that he wanted to either be, do, or have. And they were wild things like, I wanna have dinner at the White House. I wanna meet the Pope. I wanna appear on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. This was a long time ago. He said, I wanna coach Notre Dame. I wanna win a national championship. I wanna land a plane on an aircraft carrier. I mean, the list went on and on. Well, after reading that book and making the list, he realized that by writing down his goals, he started finding ways to achieve them. But it all began by dreaming big and writing those dreams down. So far, Lou Holt has achieved 102. 102 of the 107 things that he wrote down. Isn't that amazing? 
So, one of the best ways to get started dreaming is to simply identify your desires. To just use this page right here. In fact, I counted the lines <laughs> on the notes page. There's actually, actually 20 lines for you to write down. 20 things that you either want to be, do, or have. Like use this during your devotion time to just sit there and think. And this is fun. Don't think about how you could make this happen. Because the number one question that will stop you from achieving big dreams is asking how. How could this ever happen? Don't ask that right now. This is your moment to let your imagination run wild. Where you write things, like me and Rodney wrote, we wanna see all 50 states. We wanna visit these countries. You know, just how much money do you wanna have in your savings account by the time you're a certain age? Um, just what do you want to achieve? Do you wanna write a book? What? Who do you want to meet? Just start writing everything you can think of. So, use your morning devotion time to just start thinking and dreaming and imagining your biggest desires. So, you got it? Okay, the last devotional that I want to share today is from day 21. And it's actually titled 365 Thank Yous. Now, let me read the quote first right here. This is what it says from John Kralik. He said, until you learn to be grateful for the things you have, you will not receive the things you want. Now this comes from a story from John Kralik, who at 53 years old, and I tell his story right here, he hit rock bottom. In fact, his law firm was struggling. He was being sued. His family was falling apart. He was behind on his bills and he was overweight. Now, if that isn't discouraging enough, his lifelong dream of becoming a judge seemed hopeless. So desperate for change, John realized if he stopped focusing on what he didn't have and he found ways to be grateful for what he did have, maybe he could find a little bit of happiness or maybe his life could just be at least tolerable because he was flat out miserable. Well, just John started setting a goal this was in January. He said he was out walking one day up in the Hollywood Hills or something, and he just had this idea on January 1st. What if I write a thank you note? Just write a little thank you note. 365 thank you notes, one for every single day of this new year. Well, all of a sudden, day after day, he began to focus on gratitude. He started writing people closest to him. He wrote letters of gratitude to past and present business associates people he admired, people he didn't get along with. He wrote to friends from college and clerks at local stores. He thanked his doctors. He thanked his neighbors for being good neighbors. He literally was writing to anyone he could think of, just notes of gratitude. Well, as the year went on, every single thing in his life turned around. Surprising benefits and blessings began to come John's way. One thank you card that he wrote was to someone who owed him money but he sent the note with no ulterior motive other than to express gratitude for the man just being in his life. But in return, the guy paid him the $4,000 he owed him. Here's the, here's the gist of this story, bottom line. His entire life turned around, was restored, and completely transformed. He's wealthy, he's healthy, he's happy with his life, he became a best-selling author, and he achieved his lifelong dream of becoming a judge for the Superior Court in California. Here's my point. The more gratitude you express, the more abundance you experience. Now you know that, and I always say a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. So, I want you to use your notes right here to just start thinking, what do you have to be grateful for? I mean, fill up the page. Think about your health. Think about your home. Think about your friends, your family, your job. It may not be your dream job, but you have a job. There's a lot of people right now who don't have a job. So when you start saying, Lord, you know, it's not my dream job. It's not my dream house, but I'm so grateful I have a place to live. I'm so grateful that I can pay my bills. When you just start expressing gratitude for what you do have, this is a principle that comes from the Word of God. It's not something that John Kralik came up with. It's not something Oprah Winfrey came up with. It comes straight from God's Word. God is the one who said, Psalm 100 verse 4, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So when you start your prayer time just saying, Lord, 
thank you so much. Lord, I thank you. I may not have the perfect body, but I'm grateful that I'm healthy. I'm grateful that I have a job. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for my precious children. Maybe they're not where I want them to be, but I know you're working in their lives, and I thank you for my family. So think about what you do have to be grateful for. You know, we saw in the Bible about, you know, Paul and Silas, when they were thrown into that cold, dark prison cell and they were beaten and they had blood dripping from their bodies, it was the worst thing and they were wrongfully tried. I mean, if anybody should have been mad and going, this is not fair, it should have been Paul and Silas. But it says instead, in the midnight hour, which signifies the darkest hour, they lifted their hands to heaven and they just began worshiping and praising God. What were they doing? They were just expressing gratitude for how wonderful God is, how faithful He is, that He's going to deliver them. They have nothing to fear because they knew he was, on their, he was on their side. Well, the Bible says that the other prisoners heard them. They were thanking God so loud the other prisoners heard them. And an earthquake was sent from heaven. The walls began to shake. The floor began to crumble. The chains fell off their feet and the prison doors opened up. What does that mean? That means that a grateful heart, you being grateful, God will open doors in your life that you never dreamed possible. All because you are practicing the art of gratitude. So I wanna challenge you, cause I can start preaching now. I wanna challenge you to use your notes page to just start praising God, journaling what you're grateful for. Just being conscious of, Lord, I don't take this for granted. I thank you so much for this. Just make it a way of life. And you know, I think about how this year, you know, when the pandemic broke out and I told you how me and my team were looking at the emails that were coming in. This, is con this conference is canceled. This meeting's canceled. This is canceled. All these things were canceled and it just looked hopeless. And it looked like there is no way we can achieve our goals not just at the ministry, but even me and Rodney personally. It just looked like, oh my gosh, this is hopeless. Like, how will we ever do what we set out to do this year? But you know what? God has taught me to make gratitude a way of life. Gratitude is one of the core values at our ministry. In fact, we have a gratitude wall at the offices. But just constantly saying, Lord, I am so grateful that you are faithful and I don't have to be afraid. Lord, I'm grateful that you've sent us partners who are so behind this vision. I'm so grateful for our partners. And we just start expressing gratitude for what we do have instead of what we don't have. And then the other thing we did, and some of you have heard me say this over and over, but the Lord told me specifically to share this, is we started giving according to Genesis 26, 12. Well, gratitude and giving. I'm telling you, in fact, I wanted to read this to you because this whole month we're talking about journaling your time with the Lord. And obviously I do that. And so listen to what the Lord said to me. This was in May when he led me to Genesis 26, 12 back in March. And some of you know what that says. It talks about how there was a famine in the land, just like there is right now. But it says Isaac chose to sow seed in famine. In other words, when everybody else was holding on to their seed, Isaac said, the best thing I can do is get my seed in the ground. Well, verse 12 says that in the same year, Isaac reaped a hundred times as much as he sowed. A hundred times. So I told my team, I want in on this Genesis 26, 12. Well, the Lord told me to make our seed memorable, that we had to give and do it right then. Well, I wanted to read to you my journal because that's what you're doing. You're journaling your time with the Lord. Listen to what the Lord said to me. This was in May. He said, give according to the harvest you're declaring. If you can give more, give more. He said, it only sets you up to receive more. And then he said to me, you know this. But he said, obey quickly and your harvest won't be delayed. Now that was on May 26. The Lord told me, obey quickly and your harvest won't be delayed. I told my CEO, my CFO, I said, we've got to sow 2,612 into several ministries and we have to do it today. Like we can't wait till tomorrow, we got to do it today. They said, why, so, why are we in such a rush? I said, the Lord said, obey quickly and your harvest won't be delayed. Do you know that 
very day, I have it here in my notes, that very day, our ministry broke a new record on our website for sales and donations that very day. I'm not making this up. So then I told my team, let's give again. Let's get some more seed in the ground, just like Isaac. Well, listen to what else the Lord said to me. He said, give where you feel led and do it quickly. No delays on your part produce no delays on mine. Then he said this, prompt obedience produces a prompt harvest. Now I'm starting to see a pattern here, aren't you? About doing it quickly. When God puts it in your heart, do it now. Don't wait another 24 hours. Don't wait to process it and think about it and contemplate. Do it now. So again, I told my team, we got to sow seed and we got to do it now. So we sowed significant seed into several ministries and we did it right then. Well, that month we broke records again on our website, the previous record. And it just kept happening month after month all summer. Well then, this was later in the summer, I was sitting at a conference and it was actually the morning of the conference and this is what the Lord told me. Because we still needed $100,000 to pay off the icing conference, 100,000. And here I am just giving and giving and giving and God keeps breaking records. Well, this is what the Lord said. He said, your giving today sets things in order for tomorrow. He said, trust me, you simply obey what I tell you to do even if it feels awkward and stretches you. He said, do it anyway and watch my favor overtake you, overwhelm you and override every obstacle. And I thought he was done talking and then he started talking again. And this is what I heard the Lord say, never hold on to seed that can produce so much more than you currently have. He said, get it in the ground so you have more than enough. Well, I told my team, we need $100,000 for the icing conference. I said, we're gonna sow into someone else's conference and we're gonna add some zeros to our 2612. So instead of 2,612, we sowed $26,120. And I did it right then, that very day. Well, do you know, the next week, we received all the money we need to completely pay off the icing conference and it was paid for before it even started. I'm telling you the truth. This is Genesis 26, 12. It is our season to experience Genesis 26, 12. Keep in mind, this is during a pandemic when I'm just like you. I didn't know if anybody was gonna show up. I didn't know if anybody was gonna sponsor the icing event. I'm operating in faith just like you are. When you still owe $100,000 for an arena that you rented and yet you're giving and giving and giving and you're going, Lord, I need $100,000 and you're telling me to sow $26,000. I could use that for the, the conference. But the Lord said, get it in the ground. Prompt obedience produces a prompt harvest. And then for the Lord to more than pay for the conference, it was paid for before it even started. So I wanna minister to you today and I wanna challenge you Get your seed in the ground. Declare that this is our season for Genesis 26, 12. In fact, y'all have heard me say, I printed out Genesis 26, 12, and I put my name where it says Isaac. And I declare every day that Terry reaped a hundred times as much as she sowed, and the Lord blessed and favored Terry. So I want you to do the same thing. And if you feel like the Lord's leading you to give to our ministry, Give your Genesis 26, 12. This is the season for a hundredfold return. Some of you have already told me your testimonies. You've put them in comments. You've sent me your emails with your testimony from Genesis 26, 12. We get them all the time. Why? Because there's such an anointing on this message and on this season. So if God leads you to give, then there's a link right there. Just click the link in the description. Go to terry.com slash give and you can get your Genesis 26, 12 seed in the ground now. Remember what the Lord said, prompt obedience produces a prompt harvest. So I want you to know we honor your seed, we pray over your seed, and we are declaring this is your year for Genesis 26, 12. You will receive a hundred times as much as you sowed and the Lord will bless and favor you. So I wanna say thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me. Don't forget to get your book, get your bundle, Instead of $38, this is only $27 for the Live Your Dreams devotional. 
and the two audios, Journal Your Time with the Holy Spirit and How to Have an Intimate Relationship with God. So click the link in the description so you can get your bundle. And again, next week will be our final week to talk about this book. Does that sound good? Okay, thanks for watching. I can't wait to read all your comments. I love you so much, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.